My name is Thomas Dale. I'm with Homefront Financial Services and the Funding Group. Um, this video is going to be sort of a blitzkrieg version of everything that um, I tell people to do all the time that I, you know, did personally. You probably saw in the previous video. Um, I flip houses right now. I also help people with my funding group um, help a lot of flippers get money. And um, I did my first 15 homes pretty successfully. I mean, it really changed my life dramatically. Um, I did them in really two years' time. Sold them for, I bought them for 732000 I didn't buy them all in one group, but I, you know, one by one, put around twenty, twenty-five thousand each of them, with an exception of one big one. Some I put as little as seven or eight, and then sold it for one point seven seven million. If you add it all up, I got into helping people funding, uh, get funding for it, and and now I'm helping them. You know, uh, people that are trying to get started in this. I mean. I just think everybody's so vague out there, it really pisses me off. Every, you know, oh, you might want to think, I'm just going to tell you exactly what I would do. And I just think it's the smartest thing to do. I, not only do I still do this, have success doing it, but I talk to people every day in every part of the country. And I just have a real good feel for what's going on out there in flipping homes. And there's a lot of people doing stupid stuff that I'm just thinking, man, they're just doing it the wrong way. This video for what it's worth it's going to be totally free i mean i do have something for sale like everybody in these damn information videos but um i promise you man i'm not holding anything back here as, as other than time is the only thing constraining us i just want you to know like you should this should give you some really good ideas and start you down some really good paths and just the next i don't even know how long this video is going to be i'm hoping 20 minutes 30 minutes i don't know um because there is just, you know, it's like if, if you really know the directions on how to get somewhere and someone asks you, a lot of times people like telling you, hey, go here, do this, turn there. And I've just already paid the dumb tax on some of this. So I think it's, you know, I like sharing with people. Um, the reason I told you about the type of house is just some disclaimers. And I would, if I were you, I'd pause this video and get something to write with. Um, there is my average house I'm buying for between 40 and 70 and I'm selling between 110 and 150 I've sold some outside of that but that's when I'm talking about these numbers that's kind of where I'm at and that's where I think it's smart to start because every people can buy cheap homes I mean there's the mark you know the amount of people that can buy a hundred and forty thousand dollar house is just there's so many of them and it's just so economical for them to do it it's almost always cheaper to own the damn thing than to rent um, uh, just on a monthly basis for getting about equity. So that's what this is just kind of as a disclaimer as we go into this um, The first thing <laughs> I, I these things are in order of the importance. I feel that they are um, I Couldn't imagine going back and doing this without access to the MLS It might sound like a daunting thing But it was man I had probably ten chances to get in the MLS and there are probably other ways that I don't know about that you can get the type of data that the MLS gave me. Um, it really helped me learn the market quickly. I just like I just learned it, and so what I'm telling people is get access to the MLS. The way that you can do that, you know, realtors are allowed to have assistance, and it's like thirty-five dollars a quarter or something, and um, that's what I did. I basically just found somebody that would let me. Um, I just basically said, look, I know I, I'm. I don't trust. I, there is no realtor going to just show me listings and, oh, I'm going to go buy it. No. I want to do all kinds of research. Um, I'm not going to contact anybody, do anything. I just want to be able to search and figure out sold data and, and every neighborhood and everything that's going on. You know, if you'll let me just, I'll pay for the access. Um, my access, obviously, to this. And then when I buy stuff, you know, you can, before I submit or do anything, you can check off on it and what happens is sooner or later you're just doing everything yourself and they get some commissions I even got it to the point where you know in a, in a different type way we, I mean I was even I, I don't know there's some realtors that are pretty hungry and um, you know letting them be your assistant is it, you might have nine out of ten of them are probably gonna say no I would assume but there's some that you know I even have people that have paid for the real you know realtors about to let their license go because it's 500 a year offer to pay for that and become an assistant um, you know if you know anybody in real estate great that's a good place to start I mean I found people on Craigslist willing to do it and just kind of met with them and told them what I was trying to do um, what I want to do is get all the data um, what I did with the data was build something like this, and this is available in our back office if you decide to come on or whatever. Um, but this is a pretty tough Excel sheet here. Basically, you know, I take all of the where are we at here. I take um, I take all the sales off the MLS. Man, and this is kind of a let me just see if I can get this the right size. 
what I did was take all the sales off the MLS. I hired somebody to, to do this off of like hire a coder or um, Odesk or something like that. It you know I can just dump in this this data. This is all the sales sold data. What it does, I mean you'd be surprised. You know it basically makes a um, um, I ca I basically base everything off the subdivision in my county. We have a uh, and I just pulled up an old one of these. You know, I basically come up, you know, everything has a legal subdivision name. So I come up with a price per square foot per subdivision. Everything, and, and this will, we'll get into this in a minute. You don't necessarily need this, but this is what I did. I knew every subdivision in my Northeast Florida, um, what they were charging per square foot. And then what it allows me to do is load in the active list. Um, and I don't even have one here, but I could just take all the, every day we would do this. And this is how I used to buy it some of my houses, not all of them. What it really did was teach me. Every day I would go to my MLS, download everything that's active, dump it in here, and then it creates, I wish I had, it basically creates an intrinsic value for each, um, you know, for each house. It, it basically goes to the subdivision. Um, and, and like I said, this might sound like a lot. It's not something I expect people to do. I'm just telling you what I did. And if you come into our program, we would set one of these up for you. But um, it basically takes the subdivision, comes up with, you know, in this subdivision, this is the price per square foot that they're averaging over the last six, whatever you have in your historical database. And it just comes, you know, but these people are only, it, it, the historic is $100 a square foot and they're asking for 50. So then I would just sort this by the intrinsic value and th that's where I would start. You know, I would basically um, go to the houses that seem to have value in it to me everything was priced per square foot now is this perfect hell no i mean you know especially in subdivisions with homes on the water i mean you know you'll your price per square foot will go up and you can tweak it over time and i have one of these that i um i still use basically where i you know when i really get cash rich um i get in here and kind of fix this thing and see if there's anything else because you know one way you buy most of your houses is for what's on the market right now um you know that means you're doing a lot of waiting you know so a lot of times you find stuff that's been on the market for a while and and bid low and bid low on some of these things that you like that you know for whatever reason kind of went under the radar um or whatever it's not perfect but this is basically why i want mls access not only for this but you know i just cannot rely on a realtor to tell me every little thing i need to know about a house because if you're smart you're not going out and looking at three houses and buying one if your market's anything like mine you're going to have to look at hundreds and bid on a lot to get the ones that you want if you if you're going to do it my way which i think is the smart way this isn't this isn't like buying a retail house you need you know a realtor to be stupid to work with me and try to do everything i want a realtor to do do for their commissions on a forty or fifty thousand dollar house. So <clears throat> I can get more into that later in the back end. There's other places like Flip Comp where you pay them a hundred dollars a month and you can get the same type stuff. Redfin. I don't. I haven't used these. I just use the MLS. But to me, if you have any chance of getting the MLS access by becoming an assistant or even getting your license, I guess I would do it just because, especially if we're working together, I really know how to advise someone in that scenario. But you need to get data that you trust not just everything can't just be off feel and i mean this will also grow on itself which each step you know each step is going to make more sense so that's the next step is get your numbers down i'm telling you man uh everybody has just completely wrong number way too optimistic of numbers i did everything as a price per square foot per subdivision so i don't rely on this side it's like in jacksonville we have avondale and riverside and murray hill they're all within you know i, I mean they're million dollar houses you know within a half a mile you'll run into forty thousand dollar houses so you can't just say this area i basically broke it down in subdivisions and um getting those numbers down just knowing what a, you know what a house is when it comes across the thing so many people oh this looks like a good deal but you really should be every time you see a house you should look at what the square footage is and what the cost is and then you want to go and compare that cost per square foot for other houses in that subdivision and that's i mean it's pretty simple if you can get access to that data i mean uh, a computer can do a lot of the work for you the other thing that i'll think when i say get your numbers down it's not just price per square foot per subdivision and don't make this don't let that seem daunting i mean a way to you know i did this for a whole northeast florida area i mean which is easy to do when you build a sheet like that but you know you might just you might be starting in your neighborhood or a place that you know you might be able to come up with your price per square foot for your small little part of town and that's a good place to start start somewhere you know 
But the other thing is the transaction cost. You know, keeping in mind that I'm talking about like like an average of $125,000 retail in sale. I mean, I don't pay realtor fees um, that often, and I'm still calculating over 10,000. People think I sell for 125. I calculate when I'm trying to find out what to bid that I'm going to spend between really eight and twelve thousand dollars on these houses that are a hundred and you know ten to a hundred and fifty um that and that's without realtor fees you know most of the time um because you're going to pay for a buyer's closing cost or you're going to pay for realtor fees um you know there's just everybody's got their finger in the pie and you don't want to say i'm going to sell a hundred twenty five thousand dollar house and walk away with 120 grand that's going to make you bid too much so figure out what your transaction costs are going to be because if your model is you're going to use realtors and you're probably going to be paying for um buyer's closing costs then you really need to figure out what your transaction costs are going to be you might you know a lot of times i can get lender credit you know i deal with certain i'll get to that in the end that's which is the biggest part of this is how to build the buyer and just make every make all the stuff less important because you've got somebody on the line that is valuing home ownership differently than other people um you want to you want to um you can get lender credits and really reduce your transaction costs but just you got to at least go in there thinking you're going to spend 10 grand and if you miss it on the upside great but you really need to have the discipline to do that realistic rehab cost um you know that's pretty much speaks for itself on our in our back end here we have Excels that you can download that are, you know, this is what an average cost to change a toilet out, or this is what an average cost of a, you know, um, uh, flooring, whatever. I mean, uh, this is a hard thing to pin down because I talk to a lot of people that swing their own hammers, and just depending on who you are, you really need to get that down. Get an Excel and just, when you really go and look at a house, figure out what it's going to cost. Download our Excel on the back end that already has, you know, st stuff from a, a, um, you know kind of stuff from a rehab company that basically says this is what we charge for it you'll probably get it cheaper in a lot of instances but whatever i mean you need to know that because you won't be able to bid without these three things um this might sound crazy and out of place but honestly i'm putting this together i'm like bad cr i used to have a credit repair company for 10 years i probably helped 10,000 people that's how i kind of that's kind of my angle on them all of this is I really know how to get people financed for stuff, whether it's um, real estate investors helping them get money to do their first flips or customers buying my houses or whatever. Um, if you have bad, if you don't have bad credit, great. You're, you know, you need 680 plus credit. It's not hard to get. You need to have, if you need to ha start now, if you have bad credit, I mean, and I'll just very quickly, you know, um, get into this because I, well, the point of this is is bad credit is going to always always cost you more money to keep than to fix and if you're about to get into real estate flipping that's times 10 true so start now because it's so damn easy to fix your credit if you have time if you come and you don't have any time it's going to be hard so I basically break down people with bad credit into two types um, and I won't be really quick with this it, the blue up here is if you have a bunch of negative stuff or even five or more negative things that are just old collections or just stuff that's kind of on your report you need to either go to creditinfocenter.com and learn how to dispute that stuff or I use sky blue credit I'm not affiliated with them in any way but I mean for 50 60 bucks a month for three to four months they can get a lot of the low-hanging fruit deleted off your credit report and whatever's left you need to get on payment plans just to get negative stuff um, not reporting on your report because what people don't realize is collections and charge-offs you know a lot of those things report negative again every month and it just makes you stuck in a hole so if you just do this you can at least get new negative stuff from hitting um, a lot of people I talk to these days don't have positive credit it's simple to solve and again we have a lot more of this on the back end but it's so simple I mean if, you, if people just worked on their negatives up here and then added some positives um, I'm just telling you it's not hard. I've told people I've not to this day seen somebody who just doesn't screw up for one year and not be in a 650 to 700 credit score. One, you just don't tell anybody to screw off. Don't tell your, don't let your Comcast or your cable bill go. Don't not return your boxes. Don't break a cell phone plan. Don't have out old collections that are reporting negative of new every month. If you can just not do that for a year and keep three things on your credit, you're probably going to be to where I can get you a bunch of money um, in the very near future. People don't. People think it's all about the old negative stuff. Man, your credit score is your last 12 months of payments. So if you don't have 
active good credit on there that you're paying on time you're never going to be good and so the whole point is start this process now because this honestly is easy just make sure you have three things reporting and make sure all the negative stuff is stopped reporting every month and then just let it ride for a year and you're good even if you don't get the stuff deleted you're still good just have nothing negative happen for a year and maintain three lines and you're going to be in a good spot and that's something important to know right now if you have good credit I'm sorry to waste your time on that but most of us don't you know when entrepreneurs don't have good credit this is like the fourth step here, and I think it's funny because everybody worries about this first. You know, get money. You know, it's not the first thing. I would first learn <clears throat> about my market and make sure I know what I'm doing before I worry about getting money. I would obviously, if I don't have good credit, I would really, um, you know, what are you even doing? Everybody's trying to get the money first. They don't even know what the hell they're going to buy with it. And when some, a lot of times when you have money in your hand and you don't know what you're doing, you're going to make a mistake. So I would do a little bit of the work first. Um, these are the top things I think to get money. If you have any, I call them crazy family members because you're always crazy until you're successful. And then, oh yeah, he's oh he's we knew he was smart all along. But if you have any that are willing to loan to you now, in the form of here's money, or do they have good credit? Because good credit equals money. That second, you know, the second thing is going getting traditional mortgage loans is not how I recommend doing it. If you have good 680 plus credit, I go out and get unsecured loans, installment. Uh, loans, credit lines, and credit cards. That's what I go out and get for my people, and I flip houses on them. I borrow the money at under 4% unsecured pretty much indefinitely, and if you have good credit, you have money. If you have anybody in your life with good credit, they have money, and um, you can borrow the money very, very cheaply. I mean, really quickly. I mean, what we do is I go out and get certain cards or line. Like, I can get a credit card that will let you take a cash advance for no fee. I mean, you can get a $20,000 credit card, and you can just take a cash advance for no fee. Um, you call them up and say, put the twenty grand in my checking account. And then your interest clock's running, and everybody gets scared. Oh, I'm going to have to pay high interest rates. Er, you know, we basically then go out and get another card that offers 0% balance transfers with no fee for 18 months. And if you do that, you can just pay off the first credit card with the second, and the end result is $20,000 cash free. But now you have the, the original line that you cashed out. You can cash advanced again on and send it to the next credit card. So we get people $100,000 that way. And to me, that's the best way to start. You get to go out and bid on the house cash. You get to buy it cash. You own it free and clear. If you know you're, all your payments um, for the next year, if you need that long because you're messing up and you don't know what you're doing, are going to principal and um, if it ever hits the fan, you own that house free and clear. You know, I'd rather fight a credit card company than some guy with a with a, a lien on my house. So, you know, don't you know if you're try if you're just getting started, don't underestimate the value of getting unsecured credit, turning it to cash, and using it for your first flip because it is by far hands down the smartest thing you can do uh, times ten as opposed to trying to go out and get finance with a traditional loan or whatever. If you can't do that or for some reason, you know, you need a year to get to that point, um, maybe you have a 620 better. Or, or, I mean, I can get people down to a 580, but, you know, it, it, the moons of Venus have to be in alignment to get these type of loans. You have to be able to verify your income at the IRS level. Um, so, but if you can get it, that's how I did my first house. I mean, I did my first house with cash, but I went out and bought a house that I felt like, man, you know what, if I screw up, I could live here. And um, so, you know, owner occupied doesn't necessarily, you know, as long as you have the intention of occupying that house at the day of closing is what a lawyer told me, then you've met all your requirements. As long as you intend it to own that, to own or occupy the house, you know, then you are in the clear. Um, sometimes you get an investment. These are a lot easier to get than these. Sometimes you can get just a regular 30 year loan for a, a, a second house or a second mortgage or, so, or, you know, something like that. I wouldn't tell them I'm flipping, but that's another option. The last thing that, you know, is hard money. I mean, to, I mean, if you can get hard money for under two points and 10%, I think you're probably in the top 20% as far as getting good deals. Most of the time you're going to pay three and four points and 12 to 15% or even more and that adds up I'm just telling you once you get good you're gonna be paying 30 percent a year for hard money people don't understand how that could equal that but if you borrow a hundred thousand dollars three times in a year 
and you're paying three points and 13 percent you might think that you borrowed 300 grand but you just borrowed 100 grand three times so you start adding all that up plus all the junk fees and everything else i'm telling you they're going to take half your money um the hard money guys like the the ones that are not in your town that are online or whatever i'm you know those guys charge more money because they're not as comfortable about taking the house over if something happens if you do go to craigslist or find local guys who are you can sometimes get the 10 and 2 or less um, but it's always a backup I still have hard money options in my back pocket I just hate using them and don't ever plan to again now I use my own money and credit cards I don't even use installment loans because they cost 8% I, I mean um, credit lines I'd rather just use my own money and free 0% money um, so um, this is another one that might seem kind of weird but <clears throat> I, I preach this thing called selective aggression um, if you have a number in your mind of how many homes you want to flip this year, you're making a huge mistake. If you have a number that you want to flip next year, you're, you're making a huge mistake. Why in the hell do you care how many houses you flip? You should care about how much money you're going to make. My last two houses, I literally have around 60 to 65 in each of them. I'm, I've already sold one for 149 and that's, that's rehab and everything. I'm selling another one for 159 and, um, so I mean that's 150,000 profit in two houses. What you know? Should I? If I had said oh, I want to flip two houses this year, that sounds. I mean yeah, I want to. I mean I would rather flip one house and make seventy thousand dollars than flip three houses and make seventy five. There's so much work. Don't confuse volume with um, profit. You know, don't have a number of houses you want to flip. And why does that matter here? Is like what type of investor are you? You know, that's what I. What I feel is to be selective, you know, to just be aggressive very selectively, which means, you know, if you see those old movies with two armies about to run into each other, th there's always one side saying, hold, hold your fire, wait till you see the whites of their eyes, or like Braveheart, where everybody just holds, holds. And I think that's an intelligent thing to do. And I think that radiates with people because deep down they know sometimes you have to have the, the patience to, you know, and the discipline to be patient, I should say. So. Um, I wait because I don't need to flip houses, right? You know, and I wait for the perfect deal. But and that's how a lot of my advice is 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 um, kind of leans towards. But what if you're somebody who just really wants to quit nine to five? You know, I acknowledge that that's a huge value. I've talked to people that make less money, and there's by the way, there's no way you can make under a hundred thousand dollars a year flipping houses if you're even remotely smart and do this stuff. I mean, so if your job's under a hundred grand a year and you'd love to just tell it to, to fly, go fly a kite and probably spend about one tenth the time and make as, as much money flipping houses, you can if you do it the way I'm going to tell you. But, you know, don't let the select, if you're somebody, if you're this guy where you, man, it's, you know, it's, so valuable just to do your first house that you don't have to be so selectively aggressive on this first house. Sometimes I think it's just good to go through the process, even if you make 10 grand or 15 grand instead of 25 or 30 grand, which is what you would hope to average 25 to 30. You know, just going through the process once obviously is a huge eye opener and it'll let you know if you need to do it. Instead of, I've seen people for years go to meetings and not flip a damn house and try to learn all the stuff, and it's like they're really just not pulling the trigger. So if you're somebody like that who really wants to get out of a job and replace their income I would just remember that moving forward the rest of this presentation you know you might be it might be worth it to just sw step up to the plate and take a swing at it um, if you're somebody who isn't you know maybe you're trying to supplement your income maybe you don't hate your job you're not totally look you know it's not killing you I mean I talk to people that they have to travel and leave their family every every week and to them man it's important to get started and I think that you shouldn't just sit and wait for everything to be perfect before you pull the trigger that's what I'm saying so just know in your mind right now which type you are and moving forward know that this is me and this is what I lean towards so don't let me talk you out of pulling the trigger if you really are this guy um, um, this is the next thing that kind of helps us understand the last few slides here. Um, what type of market are you in? The biggest thing, and I talk to people all the time, and honestly, I have copied, I had a mentor myself that taught me pretty much everything I'm showing you. Uh, this this is the smartest um, investor I know. He can, kills it more than anybody I've ever met, and he's so under the radar, it's not even funny. But his market's different than mine. He's in a rural Midwestern place that people just aren't as optimistic about their homes. In Jacksonville, everybody thinks their their you know what doesn't stink and that they can they know that they can put their house on the market and get something. But there you know, if you're in a market 
that break it down like this if you're in a market that has um, you know everybody's optimistic about the price of houses you pretty much are going to be somebody who more works on the MLS and is not trying to find off the market deals but if you are in a place where you can do off the market deals meaning you send out postcards yellow letters you try to find people before they get onto the market or you know onto you know the market can also be I guess the, the foreclosure system um, it just doesn't work um, if people are optimistic I've done the I'm talking about the same everything as somebody in kind of a more depressed uh, pessimistic market not not like Detroit or anything but just it's not going I wouldn't think this would work in Dallas and and Colorado and places in Seattle places that are booming those people are pretty optimistic they're not as they're not inclined to open their mailbox see a letter from an investor saying they're gonna buy their house and do and make a move um, it didn't work down here it worked you know the, the off the market stuff works when people are a little more pessimistic I like when um, as you can see in my previous video 93 percent of my homes I bought off the MLS I don't even mess with this if you're in a place where you think that you can go on the MLS and spend three to four days like just hypothetically in your mind if you spent three days going through if you had one of these sheets like this and you spent you know three days going through these houses and you feel pretty damn good that you could put out about five to ten bids you know all lower than what they're asking or whatever and get one then to me you're in a market why even mess with all these yellow letters and postcards and every other thing you can you're already there's an awesome market you don't have to worry about title you don't have to worry about accidentally buying a second mortgage at a foreclosure auction you don't have to worry about going out and meeting someone and shaking their hand and hoping they sell your their house for less than you know they could probably get if they just called a realtor if you think you can go out and do some research on MLS and get a market that's what I did then you know I would just concentrate on nothing but the MLS I would go back to slide one and try to figure out a way to get be able to search every house on the market and really figure it out because you know um, knowing what type of market you're in kind of really dictates this next slide which is bid strategy uh, there I'm telling you there is no about the time you get it figured out man it'll change so there is no one rock-solid way you kind of have to be a little bit of an expert in every different type of way of doing it in my opinion I've done it all I've every one of these is something I've done and I'll just go over quickly um, my favorite obviously is MLS because there it is it's just like a big pot you can go pick out of um, you know why try to get somebody on the phone and sell them if you really can go in that pot the problem here is in Jacksonville it's ironically it's always been a pretty tight pot I mean if a good house goes on the market here I mean there's 20 bids by noon so um, but I've still made it work with the MLS that way you just have to be very patient and very selectively aggressive so um, and you know what I do like if you have MLX, MLS access I have every area I don't get just one email a day with a new with the new arrivals and the new things that have been on market and of course the stuff that's been reduced in price I get about eight so that when I go into this little area I know I'm in let's just call it Avondale mindset where I know I can sell houses for three and four hundred grand or whatever and I don't have to you know as opposed to an Argyle market which is a cookie cutter place with a lot of houses built in the 80s and I mean every house sells for eighty dollars a square foot just you know on the high end and eighty to eighty five I guess and I, I just want to be in a different mindset when I look through those houses so I get a bunch of different you know I don't just have one big uh, email every day with every new thing on the market because to me you know my you know, a house on the other side of the train tracks is, is still a good house to flip it's just in a whole different criteria as far as the price per square foot I always tell people doing nothing is doing something you know um, uh, it's so people they get in here they get so antsy because they've been looking for two weeks or a week and they can't find a house to buy man this is a huge thing just know that every day that you are still doing work and learning about the market and seeing what's going on you know and you're not making a decision you've decided not to invest that day that's a decision that doesn't mean that you're not doing anything you've you know that's the work if you think you could just come in here and point to the MLS and just flip a house and make money that's not the case maybe you should be at nine to five all I know is that your dollars per hour here are gonna blow away anything else that you've ever done and it's you just have to have the discipline to sit here and really do your numbers and look at houses over and over and over again you're gonna you're not gonna just go in and buy a house your first week unless you're lucky 
and don't get pessimistic on that. So you've got to keep that in mind. I can't tell you how many times people just get in. Oh, this is never going to work. I mean, they look at houses for three days, and this is, if you could just open up the MLS and every three days pick a house and flip it and make twenty-five grand, what the hell do you? Everybody would do it. It's the people that have the discipline to look day after day after day after day until their numbers match, and then they pull the trigger. That's selective aggression. It's not look after day, and then I'm bored, and I feel like I need to do something, so I run out and do stuff. That's stupid. Warren Buffett, you know, which I've read a lot of his books growing up, you know, he said everybody could be an awesome investor if they just if we just handed everybody a punch card with 20 punches on it, like the, like get a free sandwich at Subway or something, I guess. If everybody was just handed one of these cards, and you get one per life. You know, and you and every time you buy or sell a stock, you get to punch. So basically, what he's saying is, you only get 20 buy and sells your whole life. So make sure they count. And he goes, if everybody treated stocks that way, everybody would be good. But everybody just wants to run in and run out and run in and run out. And that's why people suck at stocks. Um, that's the same thing. Which you know, if you don't think Warren, Warren Buffett obviously is the best ever, I don't care. You know, some people can point. It's just he's killed everybody over time. Um, but. That's the same thing with houses. Of course, you're going to have more than 20 punches, but you can't. you got to realize doing nothing is doing something, and when it comes to MLS, you have to be that way. The other thing on the MLS I do is somebody told me 31, 61, 91. There are certain day, you know, I, I look at bank, houses that are just bank owned by basically sorting by the, the name of the owner, or there's different ways to do it in every MLS, but, you know, those I've gotten houses where they're af asking for sixty, and I'll bid twelve grand less, like because it's been on there for ninety days, and I'm like the first guy ringing the bell, you know, in like probably the last two months because they're asking way too much, and so I just bid low on REOs, you know, that have been on the market for a while, and I mean it used to be, I have an assistant man, I mean we would throw out four or five bids, um, I mean there'd be some weeks where you throw out ten bids, <laughs> I would just bid the hell out of everything, um, I would make sure that I could, you know. I would just bid number. I would take my formula. I knew that I always wanted to make pessimistically with all the worst case scenarios for rehab and transaction. I wanted to make thirty grand, and um, I normally I didn't make thirty grand, but I always wanted to. That's my number. So <clears throat> once I had all the rehab cost down and the transaction cost, I would just basically then say, and I knew what I was going to sell at price per square foot. I would just basically minus all that out, minus thirty grand, and here's the bid. If it's within five grand, great. If it's within 15 grand hey i'm gonna throw it in there if it's like 50 grand off obviously i'm just not gonna bid but um i bid low on reos because banks make stupid decisions i mean they just do short sales i mean the house i'm living in now i mean it was a short sale for two years um i was only there for about seven months but you know once you get your proof of funds letter and i'll go over that later i mean i just i mean when you do when you do this type of um when you do it like this, you'll notice a lot of these things are short sales. Oh, short sales take forever. I don't care, man. I, I'll If the numbers make sense, I'll throw them in the hopper. I don't even send in a binder check because nobody even really expects one anyway. So, And every now and then they come through. The house I'm in now is, I mean, I mean, I think we have $100,000 of equity in it. It was because nobody else wanted to quote unquote wait. But what's the hurt? I just keep them in the hopper. If they don't work, they don't work. Um, Hubzoo, I have people buying houses off there. Um, make sure that you, you know, I've had people buy houses off there that literally they've ran the damn auction 12 times and they just keep coming back and bidding. And I'm just saying there's there's different ways to bid houses and I would look at Hubzoo because I've seen some things work there. There's also, you know, there's so many flakes on there that bid what you think. And if you're not top bidder, who cares? Sometimes they come back to you. Craigslist. Um, gosh. Um, this is just an example. Like basically I've... You could set up little monitors in Craigslist where I basically took – this will have a keyword like um, – oh, let's go back. Where's Argyle? Um, I don't know if I'm in the right Craigslist account. But, you know, basically I know there's a, there's a cookie-cutter neighborhood called Argyle. I used to live there. Everything, I know everything. I know I need to buy stuff around sixty or around a forty dollars a square foot, let's say. So I basically, you can set this up where I say, look, anything from sixteen hundred to fifteen hundred square feet. You know, I just reverse it if you can get what I'm saying. I won't pay, you know, for a sixteen hundred square foot house, I'm not going to pay more than fifty six thousand. For a seventeen hundred square foot house, I'm not going to pay more than sixty thousand. And I make these things pretty in my favor, so that if the buzzer goes off, I know to look. And this can send me an email if anybody, if anything hits this. Um, this filter, you know, if a house between 1800 and up, 
comes in at 63, it'll ding, ding, ding me, and I get to go, and that's an off-the-market deal, so I'm all over it. So, you, I, you know, this is just one. You can set up a bunch, and you can set up for keywords for that area. It's not exact, you know, because you have to use a word like Argyle. You can't draw a map, but, you know, like I said, there's always, that's just another idea. If you go play with it, it should become apparent to you quickly. Um, if you're in one of those places where you think postcards could work, inside I'll show you exactly what I know works in certain areas. It doesn't work in mine, but I've seen it work consistently over the years in certain places um, that I just know it works. It's just people have to have a certain amount of A, time to work the leads right, and B, I think the you, the the real estate owners in the area should be... Um, they got to be some kind of pessimistic and what we do is we bid to owner occupied people that own it uh, free and clear I'm not sorry I'm not owner occupied um, that's just totally wrong I hired the wrong person to do this you can bet on free and clear places like with pioneerdata.com or is it just po just google pioneer data you can buy all the free and clear properties in your area and and just offer to you know I postcards work. Hey, I'm trying to buy houses in your area. Um, there's very, I mean, it's very specific. So if you do log in, I would definitely use what already has worked. But I would consider that an advanced thing. I would not do this for your first house. I think that's stupid. Um, you need to just get your first house going. That that's a whole different business in itself. That's a whole learning curve. Just cracking that nut. If you send out a bunch of postcards and it doesn't work, and you conclude that postcards don't work, you're that's stupid because you know you got to tweak, tweak, tweak. Um, or just copy what's inside. Bid at the courthouse. Just don't do this unless. Just don't even think about doing this. I won't even. T I mean, I almost lost it all on that. You know that is. If you haven't bid on a lot of houses, don't. If you haven't already done a bunch of houses, I wouldn't even get involved in this. I really wouldn't. My and my neighborhood too. They bid the houses up so high because their their houses. People with money can buy tomorrow. So they're. I don't know. I just. I don't. It's not a good strategy, and you could lose your shirt. You could lose everything. Um, this is the most important thing that I've done. Um, this is, you know, what my mentors taught me. Um, uh, this is where it's at. If you go back and look at my first video and the pictures of my houses, I didn't even, some of these people are rehabbing these houses with leaf blowers, man. Um, you can do every, you can try to make the prettiest house. You got two buyers. You've got your nose in the air with their quote-unquote pre-qualified letter, which usually ain't worth a bucket of spit half the time, um, and you don't know anything about it, and the other realtor, oh, yeah, everything's great, and they want you to take your house off the market for 30 days, and they want to blowball you and all that BS. I hate that. I've never really sold houses that way. When my market was really killing, I would let realtors come in, but I'd always get the max price. What I've done is build the buyer, and what I would do, if you circle, if you Google um, you know, FICO certified, you can get little... You know, what I could do is go up to people basically and say, I've had a credit repair company for 10 years. I know how credit works. I can get you approved for a loan. I basically put everybody, every single house I have, every single one goes through just like this. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of having to move this around, but it's ownjax.laurel if you want to go see this one. Um, I basically make the same site. I create a quick video. I buy a house. I create a quick video. Because it and I, it has to be and I if you can hear me it's talk. It's in Fleming Island, three two zero zero three. It's a rent. I tell them, hey, this is the house because nobody believes Craigslist. I post this all over Craigslist. They fill this out, and if you get in our program, all this can be done. We can set you up where you do this in two clicks. This is not hard to pull off. The leads come in. Um, we have a way to pull their credit, and I can show you all that. This video is getting kind of long, but the long story short is is that you need to learn more. The you need to learn mortgages, and you need to build the buyer. Um, if you go back to my video, I can't remember almost every, I've gotten the price of that I wanted almost every time because I get people who aren't necessarily qualified for a mortgage today or more often than not are and just don't know it or they are, you know, there's plenty of people that if you go to Wells Fargo, they're going to tell you you're going to need a 640 credit score. I'm doing one right now on this house with a, five, a 580 credit score. So, you know, <clears throat> I'll get into you need to learn that process. You need to learn FHA lending guidelines. And you put out, I've had, you put out um, like this for every house. You'll get people coming in that are hungry. They could give a 
damn about the price of the house. They care about not paying rent anymore and honestly locking in a low interest fixed rate more. I mean, I take people from renting all the time and I lock them in at under 4% rate and they own their own piece of dirt, something that in the back of their mind, everybody right now, the market's right for because nobody thinks they can get a loan. But you can, if you really learn how to get people loans, you are going to kill it. I didn't, I mean, you can, you should see some of the rehabs I got away with because people want to own and everybody thinks it's stupid. Oh man, there's all these people out here and these are, no, these people are hardworking. They make money. You know, they're all W2 people, which is a big thing. And I can go into all this in more detail later, but, um, as, as far as what type of people I look for, but basically learn the mortgage process, learn how to build the buyer. If you do that, you don't need to put the house on the market. You don't have to negotiate prices. You basically offer to take them from their renting life to a home ownership life. I'm not saying I don't make the houses look pretty now. I mean, I might as well kill it from both ends, but um, it is the hugest, biggest thing that I think everybody should do. If it doesn't sound like it's fun and it's overwhelming, man, TS, just do it anyways, because this is a great way to never really care what happens with the market. There are always going to be people who want to own and have maybe went to a bank and returned down or just don't know yet. So I advertise everything rent to own, and I've only rented out just two or three of the houses. Most of the times I get them done in 30 days or less. So I'm like, hey, you can move in right now and risk money, or let's just get this stuff to my mortgage person and see if we can get this thing done. I can hand you some keys and you'll be done with it. You don't have to give me a dollar. It's a pretty strong pitch. Um, so the way that I would learn that is, you know, you can, there's stuff online like this. You can become a FICO cert, and then you can actually tell them like, yeah, I'm certified FICO. You can, there's some kind of, you can say you're, I don't even know what designation they tell you, but, um, there's a site like this, all regs, um, go learn this stuff. It's crazy simple once you do it, it's not rocks. Everybody thinks it takes all this stuff and I did too. It's not hard, but learn. Learn how the credit scoring system works and learn how, what it takes to get FHA loans done. The best per, the smartest person I've ever seen on this, I know some of the best mortgage brokers ever who have basically taken someone who's been turned down eight places and got the deal done. Um, the best one I've ever known, never had a mortgage license. He's my mentor, really. He, he tells experienced mortgage people what's, he knows the FHA guidelines more than anything ever. And, um, learn it. I, 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 I could go on for 10 minutes about how you need to do it, but you need to learn the FHA lending guidelines and get FICO certified and even maybe take classes to learn how to do FHA loans. You're never going to do the loan, but what that is is power because right now what's happened is with the Frank Dot, no, there is no incentive for mortgage people to do stupid hard loans. They don't make any money anymore. Most of them, if they go to a bank, they get like a hundred dollar. They don't care. They don't want to try to take somebody with a 600 and get them over the goal line. They they don't want to do that. They want a 700 slam dunk, throw it in the hopper, be done with it. So there's a huge demand out there that uh, for mortgage advice. Become that person and kill it, I promise you. Um, then you're obviously going to get a solid mortgage broker because you can't do loans on homes that you own, so you're going to need one. And <clears throat> what I've done is I tell them exactly what I do. I tell them exactly what I do. I've learned this stuff beforehand so I don't sound like an idiot and I don't let make them think I'm just going to throw up a bunch of stuff all over them. I basically get the person. I pull their credit. Um, the way we get credit is, you know, you can get, as a landlord, you can pull credit, you know, and I can show you, I can give you more advice on that on the inside here, but, you know, we basically pull their credit or, you know, if you get into one of our programs, we're even going to be pulling the credit for your tenants and helping you out with this process. Um, but, by the time my mortgage person even hears from somebody, they've been pre pre screened. I make sure that they have job, they can make money. It's on verifiable with the IRS that their credit score is in the ballpark. Um, that if there's issues on the report, that is going to hold us back. We already, I've already talked to them about it and have a game plan. And that's where the deal is. Um, you know, if you if you get a good mortgage person and deliver them, make their job easy. Don't have some attitude. Well, he's the mortgage guy. Let him figure it out. Man, I'm telling you, I had a mortgage license. It's stupid. You don't make any money and you sure as hell don't make money dealing with people who can't get approved for loans right out of the gate. So you do that job for them. You will kill it. That's the biggest thing here. Um, I can't think of another way to do it. Uh, I know people that do 20 homes a year times 25, $870 per house. And that doesn't even count the the few months of rent they get. This isn't some multi-year program. We get them done in 30, 60, 90 days. Um, and if you figure it out, you can, you're going to have something none of your competition does. 
the last thing is, is if you are that nine to five guy um, there's nothing going to teach you there's no video there's no not you know experience is the mother of all teachers if you're that nine to five guy um, don't just run out and buy your first house but just know that man going through the process one time can really tell you if this is something you want to do um, and you know uh, if you if you're ready to quit your job or think about quitting your job because um, I promise you if you measure things like I do from a dollars per hour standpoint there is no better thing on the planet than this I mean if you after about four or five houses it's not rocket science you really will have a pretty solid way to make a living and control your time if that's important to you I think starting now is 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 more important than hitting a home run the first time but um, you know if you're somebody who doesn't need to flip homes, then just know that, like everything else in life, discipline is what pays. And if you have the discipline to be patient and not go out and buy the first thing you see, you're going to find the deal and, and and make something that makes sense for you. So this video definitely went on longer. If you're interested at all in learning more, this will, you know, you can click the button below. And we have a paid for program. I don't even know what it costs yet but where all this is broken down in much greater detail and we can help you you know get the ball rolling and just accelerate up the learning curve a lot quicker than what would happen if you were um you know just jumping in the jumping in it all by yourself i even have programs where me and you can flip a house together you know and i can help you definitely help you get money if you have good credit or know anybody with good credit i can get you money and when you have the money this thing gets a lot easier and a lot less complicated and you have more room for mistakes quite frankly so i hope this was of some value to people if um if not you know um i guess ts sorry i wasted your time but i really think if you look there's a lot of decent advice in here that can at least get your brain going in a certain direction so no matter if i talk to you again or not i really do wish you the best of luck and as long as you're not in jacksonville florida um i hope you get out there and start killing it <laughs> thanks